Right, we're now with uh, General Services, and Nancy, can you introduce yourself again and your colleagues and tell us what about your budget? I certainly will. I'm Nancy Whittemore, Director of General Services. To my right is Diana Atwood. She's our department's financial manager. And in the audience, we have Diana Stevens with Building Operations, Jody Kleiner with Radio Communications, Stacy Wall with uh, Office of Fleet Management, and Robert Barlow. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do today is take the opportunity to highlight some of the things that's been going on in general services for the last year. As you know, we've been very, very busy with capital projects. Uh, we have completed three uh, fire stations, um, Station 31 in Madison, Station 3 in East Nashville, and the ribbon cutting ceremony is set for Station 33 in Antioch on April 3rd. Uh, we anticipate all three being LEED uh, Silver certified. Uh, we have three other fire stations that are under construction, Station 30 in Jolton. Uh, the project the com projected completion date is May 2013. Uh, we have Station 21, which is just off of Nolensville Road on Joiner. Uh, completion date is September 2013. Uh, Station 11, which is on DB Dodd, we just recently broke ground over there, and we have a completion date set for <coughs> January 2014. Uh, we all know how these fire halls are a great addition to the neighborhoods and we're very proud that we've, we've been a part of that. Uh, we have several other capital projects that are underway. Uh, Highland Heights, completion date April 2014. Uh, the Madison Police Precinct and the DNA Lab, completion date January 2014. Uh, Midtown Hills, uh, the Police Precinct, uh, we're anticipating July 1, 2014. Uh, Southeast Davidson Library in the Regional Park, uh, a July 2014 completion. Douglas Head Start, which we're looking at November of this year. Uh, Bellevue Library is currently under is currently in the procurement process. Um, we're also assisting HCA with the new Lentz Health Center, Health uh, Center, which June 14th, 2014 is completion date, and also with the Central Police Precinct, which is July of 2014. So as I said, there's a lot of work going on in, in the capital arena, and um, we're very thankful for the contractors we work with and, and everyone that supports us uh, in those areas. Uh, for the last 12 years, the public safety radio system has been maintained at a 99.99% availability for public safety workforce. Uh, we are in the final stages of the implementation of a comprehensive 800 megahertz radio system which will be upgraded to uh, P25 compliance, which that new system will help us with interoperability and will make those issues easier for us to address. Uh, we continue to work with local, state, and federal agencies on these issues. Over the last year, we've added the Vanderbilt uh, Police Department, Vanderbilt uh, Life Flight to the system. And just last week, I was in a meeting with these folks and they were commenting on the strength of the Metro's radio system when they fly Life Flight to Cookville or to Jackson, they can actually still talk on the radio back to Nashville. So we have a very robust system, and it's providing a lot of opportunities to other people in our community. Uh, we're in the we are also in communication uh, with the Goodlettsville City of Goodlettsville st uh, staff, Williamson County, and the City of Brentwood on how we can a partner have a partnership around the radio systems, and again provide that interoperability. Um, opportunities. Uh, the radio communication staff is also managing the upgrade and the expansion of the new outdoor tornado siren system across Davidson County. I know you all probably talked about that earlier today with uh, OEM, uh, but the number of sirens are going from 73 to 93 and uh, the upgrade will be completed in just a few weeks. The system performed exactly the way we wanted it to a few uh, couple weeks ago when Davidson County was under a tornado warning and we're already receiving uh, positive feedback from residents about the system improvements. Uh, we continue to support the Green Fleet Initiative in the Office of Fleet, Fleet Management. We have over 1,100 flex fuel vehicles. Uh, we have 50 seat, 56 hybrids, 18 electric vehicles, and 25 propane uh, mowers and uh, those types of, um, uh, that type of equipment. Uh, we're seeing a reduction in our fuel demand due to increasing the number of, of alternative fuel units and purchasing smaller and more fuel efficient vehicles. There are many accomplishments that I could speak to today, but in the interest of time, I just wanted to highlight a few. 
However, I just want to publicly say thank you to all the employees in, in the Department of General Services for their work and, and just let them know how much I appreciate what they do every day. Uh, moving on to our proposed budget for FY14, um, we have submitted the 2% reduction and uh, most of the reductions uh, in a lot of the areas like radio communications, security, EBID, postal, construction and design, we took the 2% from salary savings. We had some people who retired and we were able to take the 2% or they were just below the line uh, kinds of issues. In fleet, we're looking at a reduction in $362,600 reduction in fuel line item and it's being proposed because we've, we're seeing a reduction in our demand. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we think that's due to alternative fuels and really using more energy efficient vehicles. We also know that this winter we had a very mild winter, so uh, that probably had an impact on our fuel demand too. Uh, we have a reduction in building operations of 354,600, and this reduction will have a significant impact on our preventative maintenance and janitorial programs. We all know when you reduce, reduce those services that we have an increase in maintenance and repair costs. So, but we, it was something that we can continue to um, try to manage, but we do see some, um, some impact in that one. Uh, improvements are being requested to adjust contract prices per escalation clauses, uh, additional fleet requests by, by departments, and for the implementation of fuel audits. We also um, are asking to address the issue of direct bills in the area of, of the Office of Fleet Management. We have some utility adjustments that we are asking for, and we also, there will be some operating expenses that will be associated with the new facilities that are coming online. So this concludes my remarks, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, Could you talk about the, the alternative fuel program and you, how many electric cars we have now? I think we have 18. And what are they used for? Well, we have them, a lot of them are in the downtown area. We have some at, on the Fulton campus so that employees can have access to those on a regular basis to, to uh, be in the, um, in the immediate area. But they're mostly used for just, um, uh, you know, just business in town or, you mm -hmm. know, with, within the city. Is there any plans to increase that number? Or? We all, yeah, we're always looking at increasing the number of all, our alternative fuels. Once we get our 4% um, allocation, then we'll, we'll work with departments. And any time a department has an opportunity to use an electric vehicle, then we certainly uh, want to encourage that. As we're building new facilities, we're putting electric char charging stations in the new facilities too. So that makes it a little more viable for people to travel out to like Goodlitzville Library and out into those areas so that they, you know, they can charge up while they're out there. Okay. And then uh, the, in terms of the sirens, we did talk a little with OEM about that, but essentially what that was was increasing the number from around 70 to 90. 73 to 93. And changing the the noise that's correct the tones the different sound, I guess, yeah yeah, yeah. the uh, you were right the first time <laughs> <laughs> instead of that digital electronic sound it's more of a it's a more of a mechanical and it goes right. up and down and it travels much farther than that one we're getting reports back that people in the community can actually it's not an indoor right. system and we we um you know we stress that it's it's designed for outdoor tornado warnings and that this should not be regarded as taking the place of emergency uh, radio communication or Your television weather radios, media that right, provide exactly. information. But there are some people in the county who will be able to hear them indoor just because of the improvements that we've made on the tone. Right. And, and so we, a more, a larger portion of the county is now covered um, by being able to hear these yes. sirens. Yes. Good. And I, I just, I'll compliment you all on the work with the fire department. I uh, have been to all the groundbreakings and openings, and uh, they're, they're very good stations. And in your right, they're, they're very uh, popular in the neighborhoods mm -hmm. that they're, they're in. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the Energy in Action program that you've designed? Sure. Um, 
we think it's important that we get that we tell the story of what we're doing around sustainability and that story a lot of people um, when we manage facilities they may not understand why we manage a high performance uh, building in the manner in which we do so we've we, we've come up with we developed a program that we will be pushing out to our tenants and it'll also be to the public too so that they can they can um, understand and and we can educate on the things that we're doing in metro we're doing a lot of good things around uh, sustainability we're collecting a lot of data on the buildings that we manage uh, and so we want to share that with folks not only with with people inside of metro but people outside of metro uh, the fulton campus is a great uh, showcase for sustainability there's lots of things on there they'll we have a QR tour that will be up and running so people can can uh, take that tour and find out what we're doing from the solar pan panels to the the stormwater system we have there to the rain gardens we have so there's a lot of good things going on in different parts of, of the county and the buildings that we're building do you is it maybe a rich question too do you have a sense for the vehicles we have not operating on electricity or you're buying fuel for what our fuel costs are we doing any more agreements on that or on yeah. hedging, on hedging. hedging. Yeah, we, we, because of the market we've only got uh, we got a small portion of our, our fleet uh, our fuel usage hedge for next year starting in july uh, we're still looking at the market I actually have a conference call on it uh, later this week the diesel, the gasoline prices. I can't remember one of them's, one of them's getting better, one of them's getting worse right now. I can't remember which. I think which gas just went down a couple of cents. Yeah. Yeah. but it's kind of. But so diesel, we're we're sort of buying out, out, so it doesn't yeah. necessarily reflect what you're seeing at the price now, because we're right. looking out a longer period of time. So it's sort of counterintuitive to, you know, you look at the price and that, at the gas pump, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's you're getting a good price for it. But um, I think generally um, we're going to try to see if we can't hedge more of that. Um, It'll probably be a little higher than last year's hedge price, but probably still below market. I mean, the programs work pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, you know proven successful, so I think we'll continue to do it. But there's been it's been a real it's been a tough year because of the market's been really high for a long time, and, right. and it, it sort of drops fast, and you got to catch it right at the right time. And the future market's sort of slow to react to all that, and we're trying to find the right time to do it, and we're looking to do that. Okay. Greg. Nancy, we went through a list of capital projects really quickly. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sort of the things that I, I love these types of neighborhood year capital in projects, and it's a big year in 2014. So can I run down the list again, just make sure I've got the sort of the estimated sure. dates right sure. and sort of what they are. So we talked a little bit, a little bit this morning and, and with the police and their budget hearing about the precinct in Madison and Midtown Hills and the DNA lab precinct in Madison. We estimate we're going to open that in January. That's correct. Of 14. Mm -hmm. And the Midtown Hills were sort of in the July, the beginning of next fiscal That's year, correct. Mm -hmm. right? Then the really exciting project at Hickory Hollow with the regional library and the community center that I think is a great, great, great project is sometime next summer, you think? Late July, early August, somewhere around in there. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the Douglas Head Start, which got flooded and went down as a part of the flood, we think when? November of this year. November of this year, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, and the Bellevue Library, which is long anticipated and long awaited. Right. <laughs> it's in procurement now. Yeah. You know, I don't, whatever We're short that listing, happens. so we'll be under contract before too long. And the Lentz project is going well, it's, as it's far moving, as you know? Yes, it's moving ahead. We have staff that are actually, that go to the construction meetings and right. are involved in that. Uh, we're working with them on our design standards so that we can be as closely, and it, you know, it's, uh, we'll be a LEED certified um, building right. two according to the agreement and we're anticipating june 2014. and then the beautiful old highland high school in east nashville it's it's sometime in the spring of next year right and april. to be open and ready for the school year beginning right. in april September. of 2014 yeah. is what we're okay. projecting okay and then the fire halls all yep. the fire hall projects ongoing fire hall projects. Yep. okay you're busy we are busy rich you any no i'm good I we you talk frequently. We talk yes, frequently. We do. <laughs> <laughs> there's the, the, one of the beauties of working with general services is there's no surprise. They let you know when there's things you need to know. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I think one thing I, I, I would say that I think that the, um, the complaints that I've received in terms of the overall fleet operation and the fleet maintenance have gone down considerably. And I want to, Stacy, thank you for 
the role you're doing. I know you're playing. A, you're doing a good job of communicating to the departments, and I hear that and they too. and they know you're. You know, they can't. You can't always deliver what they want exactly when they want it, but they at least feel that they're getting attention, and and you're giving. You know, you're listening to them, and you're trying to to work through that. And I think that's been a, a real significant increase over this past year is seeing the fleet operation run a little bit better and. Uh, not better, I, just more coordination and communication to make everybody. Reduction of complaints it. is a good thing. That's <laughs> very good. That's what I was trying to say. Thank you, Mayor, for stating it so much better than I could. Um, well, yeah, just thank you for your, all your hard work in your entire department. Um, you guys do a really good job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And Nancy, you're invited back to any hearing you oh, want to come you. to. <laughs> I'll come back tomorrow. Tomorrow. Which one would you like to come to tomorrow? Not animal control.